Hey all, Church of SDFU. Uh, sorry I haven't been making videos. Uh, I got back from Germany and my internet connection is busted. And then as well as that, uh, I got sick so I didn't get around to getting it fixed and now it's going to get fixed but they're going to have to dig up the footpath and all kinds of painful stuff. So who knows when it'll be back. Um, so until then, not many videos but a little exception today because I wanted to talk about what just happened in Norway. Um, and of course, in Norway, the um, conservative Christian anti-Muslim Westerner terrorist uh, killed 92 people. Um, and I watched his YouTube video, which I believe he uploaded kind of shortly before he committed this atrocity, which contains broad right-wing anti-immigration, anti-left-wing rhetoric, which is quite common to a lot of uh, nationalist conservative voices today. Um, and a lot of the undertone was certainly very similar to the undertone of certain people on YouTube and people on, say, Fox News, for example. So, especially people like Glenn Beck, themes, dangerous globalization destroying local cultures, a suspicion of uh, international uh, institutions and internationalism in general, EU, UN were mentioned, uh, of anything left-wing, um, which is supposedly cultural Marxism, um, and of course of Islam and Muslims. The video includes several images of Muslim protesters and several very bigoted cartoons. Um, and in that one can recognize certain stylistic similarities to videos and events produced by certain YouTube um, personalities in the past. Now I hear uh, the calls already guilt by association, right? I am saying that these YouTube personalities are conservative white supremacist terrorists just like this person, or at least sympathizers. No. I am not using a guilt by association fallacy, and to my knowledge, I never have. I do not think that people on YouTube or on Fox News expressing uh, views which are in some aspects similar are terrorists or terrorist sympathizers or have any sympathy for the use of violence. Um, while I disagree with their arguments on a factual basis, I disagree with the conclusions they reach from their premises. I do so on the basis of those premises and conclusions, not the fact that uh, they hold certain views in common with other unpalpable people such as this terrorist. I mean, that goes for pretty much any view. If I have any of my left-wing views, then you can say, well, uh, Stalin might have held that view. So obviously that's not a good, that's not a good basis on which to reject their arguments. And in this video, I am not really talking about the flesh of the argument at all. I'm not trying to reject the argument. Um, that is uh, something I've discussed in other videos. No, what I'm critical of here is the tone of the argument, its presentation. Um, I'm critical of a style of presentation that I believe has, especially in Europe, created an atmosphere in which extremism flourishes and flourishes on all sides, really. I'm talking about the <coughs> them against us mentality or theme, uh, which is a mentality which is stroked, I, as I said, on all sides today. And why it's stroked is because it gives one power. It attracts interest. And in one's followers, it gives rise to a fervor which often approaches zealotry. Um, I'm talking about in the case of um, this kind of anti-Islam or Islam critical uh, material, the presentation of Muslim mobs, of cartoons of violent jihad and stealth conquest and demographic time bombs. Um, in this specific instance of this killer, and looking at his video, I mean, it's terribly ironic that this person who showed images of supposedly violent Muslim crowds um, killed 90 people whilst 
probably all, at least almost all of the people portrayed in the images that he showed, probably never killed a single person. Um, but the thing is, I'm not afraid of Islam, and I'm not afraid of a culture war with Islam. I am also not afraid of a debate with people that are afraid of Islam or afraid of a culture war with Islam. I'm worried about the undercurrent of fear and hyperbole that I sense this debate often has. And that's why I ask anyone that's participating in this debate, regardless of what side they're on, to act responsibly. Now what do I mean by acting responsibly? Do I mean shut up, sing kumbaya and pretend nothing's wrong, pretend that there is no problem with integration, that there are no differences between um, recent immigrants and the people that were living there uh, for generations? No, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, I think that lots of these things are debates that have to be had and have to be felt out and there are points to be made on all sides. What I do mean by responsibility is I mean delineating between the guilty and those associated with the guilty in some way, but who are innocent. I mean dissociating between the Muslim extremist violent terrorist bomber and people who happen to be Muslim but have nothing to do with this person. I mean toning down the rhetoric and going easy on the um, emotional appeal. Because emotional appeal in an argument, in a debate, is useless anyways. It's in itself a fallacy. So showing images of crowds of protest Muslim protesters that look angry is a clear psychological ploy to make me feel intimidated and then as a response threatened and angry at them. It's worthless as an argument. So drop it. Just make your argument just present the facts um, and without getting overly emotional and debate on those points what it also means to me is being willing to distance oneself not just willing but proactive in distancing oneself from those who think that a belief they share with you uh, gives them permit to commit violence and atrocities not because you're responsible for their atrocities but because you're responsible for your contribution to the climate in the world of ideas and a climate of violence and fear and hatred and suspicion in the world of ideas does contribute to more extremism and I don't just mean this uh, to refer to uh, kind of debates on religion or Islam I mean this in all in political spheres as well I consider myself I'm always kind of torn. Am I an anarchist? Maybe not really, um, but something quite close to it. When I hear about other anarchists um, who support some kind of violent overthrow, who support rampant and uh, kind of random property damage or even harm to people as a basis of, crea of overthrowing the current system, um, and bringing uh, some kind of new uh, anarchist utopia then I'm not going to support that but I'm also not going to be quiet no I find it very important I find I have a responsibility and I'm best positioned to be one of the people that says no that is not a conclusion you can reach from the principles you've outlined that we share at all um, I believe your interpretation of these principles is wrong and I believe that you're severely misguided and I want nothing to do with people like you I think that is important and that is not uh, accepting some kind of guilt for their actions the opposite um, I, th I believe that that will discourage uh, people acting that way and I think that is why it is important for us when we share certain views with people that are in our views misusing them to point that out and to make that part of the debate. <clears throat> In the end, my intent with this video is not to condemn the degenerate Western culture, 
this backward culture that gives rise to extremism. That's what I feel has been done a lot whenever there was an attack by some uh, crazy fundamentalist Islamic terrorist. That we had the attack and then there was this debate about how Islam is backward and violent and what possible elements of the Quran or Islam might be at the root of all of this nastiness. You could now make the same arguments about the West and how we need to get rid of the West and maybe go and adopt the Chinese cultural model or something because Western culture is inherently evil and dangerous. And I think that's BS. I think that it's time for all groups, Muslim, uh, Christian, atheist, left-wing, right-wing, to stop trying to s justify their own supposed superiority over all of the other groups by pointing to the violence of a small group of extremists um, who in the sickest twist of all usually mainly kill their own anyways uh, that's the spirit in which I've been calling out uh, what I've what I see as rabble-rousing in the atheist community and I ask everyone to do the same in their own communities because extremism is not a symptom of Islamic culture or Western culture or communist culture or anarchist culture or conservative culture or right-wing culture. This fanatical extremism is a symptom of a climate of fear that is created by people on all sides when they want to get power and get loyal uh, followers and I think that's what we need to challenge. We need to challenge that climate of fear and that climate of hatred and that way we can fight extremism because what the world needs um, on a kind of cliched level is definitely love on a slightly more pragmatic level we need to get food and medicine to the places where they're lacking what the world definitely doesn't need is more extremists and the denomination really doesn't matter so I think it's time to just acknowledge that these people live amongst us all and as I said to be a little more responsible in how we approach these debates Anyways, this was Church of SDFU. Um, let me know what you think. I will see you guys all later.